What's up NZers? Hi! And welcome back to another reaction video and today we're going to be checking out another hotly requested one that you guys have been asking for for a long time which is the uh, the first Medal of Honor ever recorded. If you guys didn't know, I actually already had another channel called Kiwi Kicker, and I, re I re reacted to this video probably a year and a half, maybe two years ago. So it was quite a long time ago, and um, you guys seem to really, well, those of you who watched it on the other channel seem to really like it. So, uh, and you seem to be asking for it on this channel as well. So, because, you know, and obviously these guys haven't seen it before. No. They don't even know what it's about at all. I have no idea what it's about. Yeah, so yeah. They, they've got absolutely no clue. I think it's pretty. Uh, unique to have the very first, um, you know, Medal of Honor ever recorded. It's like you hear about all these stories of brave, you know, soldiers and everything like that saving their, you know, their fellow soldiers and, you know, performing all these heroic acts for their country, but you never really actually get to see it yourself. So in this one, we actually get to see it. And yeah, it's, um, I think it might be a bit of a tearjerker. So. Man, it doesn't take much for me, eh? Like, I said to him, is this going to make me cry? And he's like, yeah, it possibly could. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. All right, so are you excited to see this? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, excited. I know. So it, it can be sad because, you know, these soldiers, they pay the ultimate sacrifice and they pay, you know, the price with their life. But, you know, they're, you guys understand now from all the videos that we've watched that they're fighting for freedom. They're fighting for their country back home and all the, their family and friends and their loved ones. First Medal of Honor ever recorded. Chapman, a U.S. Air Force combat controller, and the SEALs are attempting to rescue their lost teammate. You'll watch Chapman's heroic actions as he saves the lives of his entire SEAL team and then another 18 members of a quick reaction force, earning America's highest award, the Medal of Honor. Chapman and the SEALs exfil their MH-47 helicopter. John is the second individual to exit and immediately moves in the direction of the summit. He can be seen moving off to the right of the screen, alone. The team is taking heavy fire from every direction, as indicated by the arrows, as Chapman begins engaging targets. You can see spent cartridges ejecting from his M4. Chapman then begins okay. closing with the enemy, forcing his way upslope in knee and thigh deep snow. He is constantly under fire as he does this. Chapman's team leader begins to close on Chapman, following his trail through the snow. The dark mass above Chapman is a fortified bunker containing two enemy fighters, each armed with AK-47s, who are firing down on the team in the darkness. This bunker will come to be known as Bunker Number One. To the left of the tree and Bunker One is another gray mass. This is a rock outcropping that came to be called the Boulder. Between Bunker 1 and this boulder can be seen the body of slain seal Neil Roberts, the man Chapman and the others are attempting to recover. Chapman, still alone and closest to the enemy, pauses to engage targets as his team leader follows him, but never actually catches up with him. Chapman, on his own, now makes the decision to charge directly into the enemy bunker, despite withering point-blank fire. Chapman, now literally on top of the enemy, engages the two combatants and kills them, saving the lives of the remaining SEALs. He does this from a distance of no more than 10 feet. These actions, by themselves, earned him his first Medal of Honor. He then climbs into and takes control of the bunker. Wow. Having cleared the immediate threat, Chapman is then joined by his team leader in Bunker 1. You can then see Chapman and his team leader engaging the next bunker, known as Bunker 2, which is situated to the left edge of the screen. This bunker, manned by a handful of Chechen and Uzbek fighters, also contains a heavy PKM machine gun, hand grenades, and rocket-propelled grenades. 
John Chapman is shot twice at this time in the torso and collapses, incapacitated. You are now looking at a new angle and at the left of the screen can be seen the two-man fire team and team leader on top of the boulder. Just below it is Bunker 1 with the mortally wounded Chapman. One SEAL can be seen firing his modified M60 machine gun from the hip into Bunker 2 on the right side of the screen until he is struck by grenade shrapnel and tumbles 10 feet off the top of the boulder, collapsing at the feet of his team leader, thus setting off a chain of events that would lead to the SEALs abandoning Chapman on the summit. The wounded SEAL and the team leader can be seen conferring about his injuries. Moments later, the SEALs decide to retreat from the summit because their position is untenable in the face of continued massive enemy firepower. They can be seen moving toward the right side of the screen and passing the body of Neil Roberts. Unfortunately, the SEALs do not pass John Chapman, who is above them and inside Bunker 1. This angle shows three SEALs in a triangle. The larger black heat signature is a smoke grenade. Just to its left is a donkey and dead Al-Qaeda fighter killed by Chapman. The steepness of the mountain can be seen as the seals begin to slide down the near sheer face. Wow. Brittle terrain, eh? Mm. The team leader, desperate for relief and now with two wounded teammates, asks for uncontrolled airstrikes from an orbiting Air Force AC-130 gunship. The impacts you see are from 105mm howitzer rounds being fired onto the ridge top in order to save the remaining SEALs. Because neither the SEALs nor gunship know Chapman is alive, he is experiencing these detonations from his position. At approximately 5.20 in the morning, Chapman recovers and begins to engage the enemy. Bunker 1 is on the right side center of the screen and Bunker 2 to the left near the screen center. It will never be known what caused his incapacitation and recovery. Of the two rounds that originally wounded him, at least one was mortal and at this time he is experiencing severe blood loss and shock. Despite that, he begins his one-man stand against two dozen enemy combatants. During this time, Chapman initiates a series of radio calls, many of which are heard by a fellow combat controller and teammate of his and Delta Force operators on a nearby summit. Despite this combat controller's replies, Chapman never acknowledges whether because of damage to his equipment or himself will never be known. This new angle and footage shows Chapman at the top, identified by the green dot under the tree at Bunker 1. The lower center of the screen shows the first enemy fighter who is about to charge Chapman in the hopes of killing the American. The timestamp at the bottom shows it is now 6.05 in the morning and fully light. He's been fighting alone now for 40 plus minutes and has received more gunshot and shrapnel wounds as a result of the fierce combat. This scene shows the second of several enemy charges. In this stunning display of determination and courage, Chapman can be seen fighting hand to hand with the fighter. In the larger screen display can be seen additional enemy moving on to the summit. But right now, John Chapman is fighting for his life. Six minutes later, in this new shot, Chapman can hear another helicopter approaching the summit. He is in the bottom center of the screen underneath the tree and can be seen in the magnified inset box as he begins his desperate final stand to save the lives of the 18 men on the helicopter. The red dots are enemy fighters. John begins engaging the enemy in multiple directions and is rapidly approaching the last of his ammunition. The helicopter contains a quick reaction force comprised of rangers, pararescue men, and another combat controller. It is now 6.13 and the helicopter is short final. The enemy is desperately trying to displace Chapman so they can put heavy weapons or rocket propelled grenades in Bunker 1 while simultaneously engaging the helicopter. With the choice to save his life or the lives of his unknown comrades, Chapman makes the decision to climb out of the bunker and begin firing in multiple directions as can be seen in the inset. Suffering from as many as a dozen wounds, Chapman is in fact already in the process of dying. 
As he fights, the helicopter is struck by a rocket-propelled grenade and makes a remarkable controlled crash just below Chapman and the summit. Chapman, now off-screen, continues to cover his comrades as they pour out of the stricken helicopter. Some of them are fatally shot as they exit. These images, with Chapman fighting the enemy at close quarter, are the last to show him alive and in this heroic act, thus qualifying for his second Medal of Honor. Ultimately, Two. Chapman would expend all but the last few rounds of his ammunition, until, finally, after 16 bullet and shrapnel wounds, Chapman succumbs when he is shot through the heart. We will never know his final thoughts or words, but what we do know is, his decisions and actions single-handedly saved the lives of 23 comrades. For more information about John Chapman's amazing story and the details about this mission, Visit danchillingbooks.com or your favorite book retailer to obtain a copy of The Chronicle of His Life, Alone at Dawn. Wow. That was pretty amazing. Wow. Was that real footage? It was real footage. Wow. Captured from an unmanned drone in the sky. Wow. They have really powerful cameras that can see really far. So that drone would have been really, I think, quite high up, but its camera would have been able to zoom right in and capture everything that's going on and they have like heat signals so they mm. can pick up you know a human body compared to just like normal ground mm. so they can see everything that's going on it's, it's a different level of bravery yeah yeah knowing that you're going to die yeah and just you, you hear about all these stories you know like from world war ii when there pretty much weren't any cameras around mm. to actually being able to see something like that actually happen yeah and what these guys are willing to do to save their fellow soldiers lives mm. how long ago was it uh, I don't know. I, I think it was 2008, I think it said at the beginning of the video. I Did wanted he? to see a photo of the guy. What he looked like. Oh, right. Uh, maybe we can pull it up. That's him there. Ah, uh, yeah. So he's young. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Denzi, what, what were you thinking as you were watching that? I wonder if they... I wonder if he had a family. Yeah. Exactly. And I wonder mm -hmm. if his family would have given him you know, the motivation to be able to do that, mm. to, you know, fight off all those people, to also just save the people around them as well. Mm. So yeah, our hearts go out to all those people who have lost loved ones, you know, in, in any conflict. Um, we can't really imagine how hard that is no, to, to deal with. Um, much like, you know, we saw the emotional return of the soldiers when they come home yeah. to see their loved ones. Yeah. And just, this is like the flip side of it, yeah. you know, when you, when you literally see firsthand when they don't come home. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I'm sure they're like, you know, considered heroes in your hearts. And yeah, we stand with you guys. We love you guys. And if you enjoyed that one, make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below. Uh, if you know if you guys are active in service because we get we get so many messages from soldiers mm. from people like in the navy and the army we get so uh, tons of messages in it just really we, cool. yeah we love it we love talking to you guys mm. um, or if you have loved ones in the army as well um, or you know as a soldier so yeah it's um it's kind of I don't know it's heart wrenching and kind of eye opening yeah eye opening as well yeah at the same time yeah. And also share the video, you know, if you want others to see this and leave us a comment down below, like I said before. And yeah, we always enjoy hearing from you guys. And that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah. See Bye. ya. Bye. Bye.